What are the expectations from India and especially G20 Empower? 2023 is going to be a significant year in the development of the world itself. In this environment, I think the world is expecting India to be that bright spot, to be that shining star. Across every sphere of development, this is the time for India to shine and women to rise. It is for women who have held a position of power to step forward now, to stand up and say that we are together building this equitable world and we will leave no stone unturned. What are the expectations from India and especially G20 Empower? 2023 is going to be a significant year in the development of the world itself. In this environment, I think the world is expecting India to be that bright spot, to be that shining star. Across every sphere of development, this is the time for India to shine and women to rise. It is for women who have held a position of power to step forward now to stand up and say that we are together building this equitable world and we will leave no stone unturned. Welcome to this very special edition of DD Dialogue G20 special series and why this is special because we're going to have a very exclusive uh, conversation with Dr. Sangeeta Reddy, Joint Managing Director of Apollo Hospitals and also she is the chair of uh, G20 Empower which basically is a G20 alliance uh, uh, which will be taking forward uh, the women empowerment agenda particularly uh, women engaging in economic activity and assuming leadership role when it comes to G20 spectrum. Thank you so much ma'am for talking to us Sandeep. It's such an honor to have you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you and so happy to be talking about something which is so important. Uh, to the community, to the country and to the world at large. To begin with ma'am, if you could just share some insights as to what is Empower G20 Empower Alliance or grouping all about as an engagement group. We understand that it started, the initiative started in Japan and now India is here to take this agenda forward. You are the chair. What are the broader priority areas under India's presidency? So like you said, this was started four years ago in Japan and became a very important part of the G20 initiative. The ideology is to look at women, women's role in the world, in the economy, at the workplace and towards this, Empower is the wing which encompasses the corporate sector, the private sector and aims to enhance and to implement policies which seek equity in the world for women's participation. Uh, broadly, the priorities that India is following will be in keeping with the global agenda. So number one, it's clearly to enhance women's role in entrepreneurship and in business. Mm -hmm. And towards this, you enhance equity as well as commerce. Uh, being a private body, this, this is one of the important priorities, but also the second important priority is to uh, look at education mm -hmm. and here we know the, the significant statistics uh, and, and you will see the statistics about you know women's role in commerce mm -hmm. but the women's role in education mm -hmm. uh, almost 60% of the G20 countries mm -hmm. have achieved 49% uh, when it comes to primary education. So that means men and women in primary education are equal. Mm. When you move up to secondary school education, it drops to as low as 42%. And when it gets to the next level of education, it goes as low as 24%. Mm -hmm. So this education gap mm. reflects itself mm. across the life of women, mm. whether it's in their ability to get jobs mm. or respect in society, respect in their homes, their role in decision making. Mm. So we are using education mm. uh, as a very, very important anchor mm. in the strategy towards women's equity. Mm. So what we understand here, there's going to be under India's presidency, Ms. Reddy, uh, lot of emphasis or rather renewed focus on gender equity and gender considerations and that is something which uh, G20 Empower would like to mainstream into G20 declaration or communicate 
and then translate those into you know policy and implementable policy Absolutely. not confined to the talk shops and government files right beautifully said <laughs> but i'll take this one step further sure, uh, by quoting what our prime minister said when india hmm. took over g20 hmm. and what he said was i'm looking for women development hmm. but i'm also looking for women led development in india hmm. so the future of india he believes hmm. is in seeing empowered women equitable uh, approach in every sphere of life hmm. so the third priority the g20 is working on is women in leadership in all spheres and when i say leadership i don't mean just political leadership mm -hmm. the government is working on some amazing mm -hmm. programs so whether it's in the uh, women in the um, in the health sector okay 80% mm -hmm. of health decision making across the globe happens mm -hmm. by women mm -hmm. and the women asha workers mm -hmm. is a model which can be followed by the world because it's truly enhanced mm -hmm. healthcare in india so india will be showcasing whether it's in water management or it's in panchayat or it's in self help groups mm -hmm. india has done some innovative um, you know unbelievably meaningful and on the ground impactful programs towards women's involvement and empowerment mm -hmm. india will showcase these india will enhance mm -hmm. these and these self help groups will get linked to corporates mm -hmm. so that we are able to enable empower and help them become more effective okay. so these are the initiatives that we're looking yes. and underlying all this mm -hmm. is a underpinning of digital yes because digital. you see equity can be achieved by education mm -hmm. but you can form another divide mm -hmm. by the digital divide mm -hmm. so we want to ensure that digital that capability is, mm -hmm. is um one enhanced. of the empowering factors yes. for all women okay so uh we understand uh, women access to technology and mm -hmm. women's access to digital that you mentioned and you being also one of the you know prominent global health influencers you know you've mm -hmm. mentioned health a lot many times so we understand that uh, when it comes to india helming the g20 empower that's going to be one of the important call to action points health so, sector so mm -hmm. the health sector is actually being very well covered uh under G20 health as a separate initiative with digital health medical mm -hmm. value travel as uh, you know a significant aspect of what's being showcased mm -hmm. under empower i i looked to make knowledge about health mm -hmm. health decision making and preventive healthcare mm -hmm. a significant strategy mm -hmm. in uh, just making people and populations and communities healthier mm -hmm. uh happier mm -hmm. and wealthier because with good health you are able to access every resource available yes, yes. and good decision making which is very much in the hands of the women in the family mm. uh, enable good health for the family so this will be woven into the theme of empower so healthy mother would mean a healthy family absolutely right? and india's development on maternal mortality bringing down maternal mortality infant mortality india's showcase role in covid all these are things that i i'm very excited to be able to showcase to the world but also share with the world so one of the things empower is going to do is to create a digital repository okay, okay. Uh, and a workflow enabler so say a country wants to look at best practices in a certain area it may come from india it may come from africa it may come from the usa we will put that out there in an easily identifiable manner because that is the the whole ideology of g20 progressive like minded companies coming together mm -hmm. countries coming together for the improvement of the world mm -hmm. that's uh, what we're here for yes absolutely now let's talk a bit about uh, you know removing barriers when it comes to women led development mm -hmm. uh what is call to action agenda in that like there there are obstacles and you have member states on the same page because here the india would also like to take the legacy forward from japan to india the distance that has been covered mm -hmm. barriers to women led development so i think different countries have different barriers when we were putting our agenda which was primarily entrepreneurship uh, education with the digital overlay and leadership in all phases of society there were other countries who raised saying they have different priorities one of them was safety of women 
So violence against women is a significant aspect that was raised, yeah. which may be relevant in some states in India, but not in the other. Mm -hmm. But these are important topics. Mm -hmm. So all this will come into the best practice grid. How did you approach it? What are the measurement parameters? How do we empower women and society at large to create equity and to remove these barriers? But I think the primary barrier is really something that we're tackling head on. Right. And that's mindset. Mindset, okay. So people have come to believe mm -hmm. that, um, you know, women play a secondary role in society. Mm. And that mindset must be removed. Mm -hmm. And uh, towards that, the sad and very significant aspect is that women themselves very often don't believe in their power. And so what we're doing is creating a mentorship platform, a digital mentorship platform, so that powerful men and women, uh, successful men and women in all stages of life and in all spheres of life, hmm. come forward and say, I will mentor you. Hmm. And so sometimes all it takes is one person reaching out and telling another hmm. that you're amazing, you're successful, hmm. you can make it happen. So basically, Empower uh, 20 or G20 Empower has a roadmap cut out for it under India's presidency in terms of also enabling, uh, Ms. Reddy, an enabling environment where women can thrive. And when I mean women, I also, let's also try and understand we have, we do have this divide, the urban and the rural divide. Uh, how do you plan to take the G20 Empower Actionable Agenda to the ground, to the grassroots level, to villages? And that's where the India resides. So you, that's, you know, you've said this beautifully and I think it's very important for us to acknowledge and that's why up front I spoke about leadership at all steps and all stages uh, of society and all geographies of society which includes rural India. The self-help groups in India, I think there are over 700,000 self-help groups, active self-help groups, there may be even more and 80% of these are in rural India. By mapping these uh, two corporates, by enabling them with knowledge, by listing their businesses and their products uh, on a global platform, each one of these are steps towards empowerment. And finally, we'll be, we'll be monitoring the outcomes of what we've done. Each of our initiatives, and there are hundreds of initiatives, they're working groups. There's a very uh, dynamic and powerful Minister of Women and Child Welfare. That's your uh, nodal Smriti. ministry. Right, yes. that's our nodal ministry and Sprithiji is very committed. Uh, the MEA is looking to involve countries and missions. Uh, so we have their involvement and their support. Uh, the G20 Secretariat and Sherpa is supporting us. Mm -hmm. And finally, and I think very, very interesting and important uh, is uh, that we have uh, a woman finance minister uh, who is leading from the front in terms because G20 is all about uh, finance. Yes. And then of course, the most powerful leadership of our Prime Minister, like I quoted earlier, when he said, I want in India not women's development, or not only women's development, I want women-led development for the whole country. So this women-led development, uh, what we understand is the core to G20 empowerment. Absolutely. So, so are we expecting a very impactful uh, G20 communique where uh, women led development narrative is central uh, you know one of the central points rather and uh, I think that's your responsibility the big responsibility <laughs> your alliance or alliance under your leadership has to share so I, I think Empower is looking forward to seeing that and I'm quite confident that we will we will see uh, that women led development as core and critical and central uh, to the G20 agenda for this year yeah. Uh, because it's already been stated by the Prime Minister and we will support it with actions and initiatives. So we're looking for a national and then a global mentorship platform like I told you. We're looking for linkages between self-help groups and uh, young entrepreneurs with larger businesses so that each one promotes uh, the other. We're looking at a global directory of businesses uh, so that women from, from Africa and India and America can get together and help each other grow. Uh, and develop uh, but one of the significant things that I'm very excited about that in partnership with the the very powerful Indian IT sector we will take a digital skills training program on a global platform and share this with the rest of the world 
or women in the rest of the world, uh, the base program will be free of cost and this will be India's gift to the world. Uh, so we're excited not only about Indian women developing, about showcasing India and the capability of women, but using Indian models and Indian capabilities to help women across the world. Hmm. So uh, you've always advocated a big push for women in politics, in economic activity, in leadership roles, in education, and you've maintained that if this happens, uh, in then that, and in healthcare, of course, of uh -huh. course, <laughs> your vertical in healthcare, then it's going to uh, play a big role in economic transformation of the country. Absolutely, yeah. But then there are obstacles because uh, you think uh, gender inequality uh, is one of the challenging areas. Uh, the fact that women have been excluded um, in some countries. Uh, from the mainstream economic activity, that is something which needs to be undone and that is going to be India way also. You know, India taking See, leadership there, positions. So there, there are multiple situations, okay? Women work. Yeah. Women work continuously, but it's called the care economy, which is not paid for. Mm -hmm. And if you look at women labor force participation, mm -hmm. it's under 30% in most countries. Mm -hmm. So that is the formal acceptance and the financial reimbursement for the work that women do. Mm. We need to change that. Mm. So it's a multi-pronged approach and strategy. Mm. If you look at women in business and women entrepreneurs, mm. only 3% of businesses in India are owned by women and only 10% of the employed workforce mm. is in a women-led business. Mm. So this is a very big gap. But we should not just look at where we are today, we should look at the direction that we're moving right. and the pace with which we're growing. Mm. And I want to tell you that in the last decade, mm. from about 2 lakh women-led SMEs, we now have 1.25 crore women-led SMEs. So this is a five-fold increase, something to celebrate. Mm. Yet more work to be done because we are only 20% of the entire businesses. With 1.25 crores, there's only 20% of all the SMEs. So the pace and the momentum is incredible. The ground we need to cover is vast, but the will and the dynamism to do it from men and women across the world is quite, quite high. And therefore, I'm confident and excited about the path for our country and the world with an equitable environment for women. Thank you. We're talking about the shared roadmap. Uh, when it comes to India leading from the front, but then there are other G20 member states also. Uh, India balancing out, if at all there are any discrepancies, it's not possible for all states, member states to be on the common page or the same page. But since we are talking about women empowerment, uh, cutting across continents, globes, there could be a shared agenda. What are the expectations from India and especially G20 empower? So let me say that 2023 is going to be a significant year mm. in the development of the world itself. Mm. Uh, this is the year that the world has recovered from COVID. We, you know, it's kind of our first COVID free year, which was such an epic uh, occurrence mm. in the whole history of mankind. Mm. Now, from here, you're seeing recessionary trends across many countries. Mm. Yet India has seemed to have balked that trend and we're looking at a strong economy growth. So there itself, the focus is on us. Right now, as we speak, our country is being showcased in Davos, mm. where the rest of the world is talking about economic recession. Uh, the mood is kind of down. People are worried. You have healthcare problems in one country that we thought was, you know, one of the meccas of healthcare. Mm. Uh, you have significant manufacturing and disruptions. You have global dis supply chain disruptions. In this environment, I think. The world is expecting India to be that bright spot, to be that mm. shining star. Mm -hmm. And the shining star is about many aspects. Mm. It's about your economic growth, of course, but it's also about the soft power, the soft power of spreading culture and economy. And what, did, what was our G20 slogan? We spoke about one world, mm. uh, one family, one and earth. these are the, and one earth. So the environment aspect. And it is very well known that women play a strong role mm. in sustainability. So across every sphere of development, this is the time for India to shine and women to rise. Mm. And, and Indian women to shine. And Indian women, of course, to shine. Mm. Uh, and by this, we mean women in every sphere. Mm. 
when a small when a woman in a small village is able to as a say a vegetable vendor mm. she has google pay mm. and she is able to say you know i have financial uh, independence, independence. i have digital literacy mm. i understand the way the world approaches yes. i don't just buy things from someone who says this is the right price mm. i know how to check the best prices mm. i know how to sell for the best price mm. i am independent right so these are the kind of i think paradigm shifts which are happening across many spheres mm. uh, and many fields in india and this is going to be transformational for our country mm. and i know this you know for a fact from our own experience in our village mm. so about 23 years ago my father started a small hospital in our village because you know it was important we were doing hospitals all over the country some in other parts of the world mm. and he wanted to give back to the place he was born so a 100 bed hospital started in argonda but it was not just a hospital we did a 100% health coverage uh, through the country's first passport to healthcare uh we did telemedicine which was in fact the button was pressed by bill clinton when he visited india in 20 uh, in the year 2000 but beyond that we focused on primary health care so we focused on maternal and child nutrition we brought down maternal and infant mortality rates we did preventive health screening today the incidence of cardiac disease is very very low because they're leading a healthy lifestyle we find cancer in stage 1 so we're able to treat them and the deaths due to cancer have come down and also very importantly is an integration of alternate medicine and we have almost 5000 people who are actively practicing yoga yes. and a healthy lifestyle yes. so this combination and this empowerment but now what's making this even more fun is over the last 5 years we have started employing women uh, and see their self help group uh, so 10% of apollo hospital scrub suits are stitched in these villages fantastic and each fantastic. of those women is earning 10 to 15000 rupees and you know where that money goes it goes to educating their child it goes to good nutrition for their family and it goes to building that's, a pakka house and women led development to the core and that, and that's exactly it. you, you know the grassroots it. grassroots so, women led so when you empower women to learn mm. when you empower women to earn mm. it creates this is going to be the india model for the world in the sense uh, okay so uh, i'm going to digress a bit ma'am here mm -hmm. you have w20 grouping already in place though it's a civil society group and uh, G20 empower is more on corporate economic leadership lines etc in the G20 scheme of things now do you think there has been enough visibility for W20 enough commitments as far as W20 is concerned and linking that to india's presidency where G20 empower has such a vast agenda to cover so you know i think you should uh, appreciate the fact that 365 days is is a very short time in the development cycle of a country mm. however what we need to do is paradigm shifts mm. significant steps mm. paths in the right direction mm. and that's what you will see this year mm. you will see india making those steps you will see that's india's right. leadership showcased yes. you will see women making progress at every level and these outcomes will be measured the government is looking at it the empower group is looking at it these will not just be activities these okay. will be activities which are linked to policy policy which is focusing on paradigm change mm -hmm. and acceleration of equity in our country mm -hmm. that's what we're working on that's what we're trying to do and i'm going to use this opportunity to reach out to women mm -hmm. and men mm -hmm. across the country mm -hmm. to please support this right to us at the uh, empower website of g20 write to us reach out to us volunteer and step up and help each one if you help one woman say she is your maid servant mm. help her in the right nutrition help her in her health awareness mm. if she is in the age group of 16 to 27 has she taken her hpv vaccine mm. because you can help her prevent cervical cancer so it's about awareness mm. and about all of us moving towards this mm. common cause mm. of a more equitable india mm. and i'm sure we can do it 
All right. One final question, ma'am. Uh, very quickly, you have a very busy year ahead. Mm -hmm. Though you said the 365 days is a very less time. But then for G20 Empowered as an engagement group, uh, if you could just share some insights into the calendar year, the activities or events that have been lined up for the next okay. uh, one year. And then I'll have a final word for you. So uh, basically we have a Troika which is the countries of uh, Japan, Brazil, uh, Indonesia mm -hmm. who were involved in uh, you know the last two years and the coming year. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have working groups online which are very very active mm -hmm. towards the stated imperatives and the desired outcomes towards this. Mm -hmm. In addition to that uh, we have to move down into knowledge and position papers which will form a part of the final document of G20. Okay. So those working groups, so we have BCG, uh, we have United Nations Women all working with us towards building those policy documents. So you have multilateral agencies are also integrated uh, with the G20. Absolutely, definitely involved. Mm -hmm. We have FIKI uh, which is our nodal agency, we have FLO which is FIKI ladies organization okay. taking and spreading this message on the ground. Uh, but we also have showcase events. Okay. So our first event is of course in the beautiful city of Agra, okay. uh, which in fact is where a monument was built for a woman. Okay. So I think it's quite significant that <laughs> we have symbolic. Agra, huh. absolutely symbolic. Yes, yes. So February 11th and 12th is Agra. Then we, we move on to Tiruvananthapuram in April and then we move to the beautiful city of uh, Bhopal okay. uh, in June. So these are the three main events of Empower. In parallel, you'll have three events of W20 and then you'll have three ministerial events as well. So we dovetail all this by August and also we are hoping that in the final event of uh, G20, there will be one track uh, for Empower and for W20. So this, seem, this is the calendar or the agenda. But this agenda is not fixed only to these meetings because like I said, there are multiple events. Uh, we have just concluded one event where along with Meta, uh, we taught over 500 women how to do digital marketing. But this 500 women was part of a group of 500,000 women that we're going to bring onto this platform. effect. Absolutely. And then we have a platform where we're going to do virtual exhibitions. Mm. So there will be hundreds of Indian business women mm. connected with businesses across the world mm. and a directory, a search engine all put together. Mm. So these are continuous activities which may be born during this year, mm. but which will continue. And finally, I think one of the most powerful platforms, like I said, mm. uh, the biggest hindrance towards us is really the mindset yes. and for the mindset we are doing the mentorship platform Excellent. this mentorship platform is where I'm requesting women and men from all walks of life mm. to please reach out and volunteer to mentor one other woman mm. to feel confident to help bridge skills I have um, a young man in Gurgaon okay. uh, counseling a 50 year old woman in digital marketing uh, we have these are game changing the, events. absolutely game absolutely these are the game changers so success is built by a series of small stories yes. and it's these kind of winning stories that I'm requesting everybody to make all of you create them we are only creating a platform or shining a light on the potential of the light within everyone yes. and the power that we can create by making women in India shine and women in the world shine. So please be a part of this change. Please be a part of this movement. I think it's sort of a writing on the wall uh, that Empower 20, uh, you know, it's sort of all set to be that one engagement group under the G20 umbrella uh, to make a change in the lives of women, not only in India, but the world around Absolutely. where it matters the most. Ms. Reddy, you've been speaking to us straight from the heart, to the nation rather. Yeah, your, final, your final message on behalf of G20 Empower to the viewers of DD India, cutting across different countries. So truly to men and women across the world, uh, for so many years, for some reason, women have held a secondary place. And it is for women who have held a position of power for men who understand the beauty of the world when both men and women are empowered to step forward now, to stand up, 
and say that we are together building this equitable world and we will leave no stone unturned. We cannot have young girls uneducated. We cannot have women denied uh, of health care. We must make sure that all have equal nutrition and finally all have equal pay, equal opportunity and equal leadership. And it is in this future world that all of us should bring our children and our grandchildren into you because that is the world we aspire. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Mr. Gita Reddy, for talking exclusively to DD India on this very special edition of G20 Empowered the Big Picture under G20 series with one and only Dr. Sangeeta Reddy, Joint Managing Director of Apollo Hospitals and Chair G20 Empower. It was such a pleasure talking to you. Pleasure talking to you too. All the very best. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.